In this segment, we'll learn how to build cloud simulations. Here you'll see the main menu that comes up when we open the app. Doesn't matter if we start from device, room, or group, device is the default. By clicking on the device, I can check in on it and I see that it's currently operating at 30%. Let's get started by pressing this button at the bottom and it'll put us into the automation menu. Up on the top where it says automation, you can scroll back and forth between scenes and automation. The best way to think about what a scene is, is it's an actual cloud. So you're basically programming a cloud coming over for a certain period of time, but you're not saying at what time the cloud is actually going to pass over. One way to look at it is that automations make the weather happen at a certain period of time, and scenes are the actual weather that you want to have happen at that time. So in my scene menu, I have one minute clouds of differing intensities for about seven minutes. And then in the automation menu, I have the number of times per day that the clouds are gonna pass over. And in my particular case, I have them passing over every hour at the top of the hour for about seven minutes at differing levels of intensity. It's best to create a library of scenes because you're gonna use them over and over as you build your automations for each hour of the day. I found it was best to pick a common icon for all my scenes, so I just used a light bulb, and then I just picked a different color for every scene just because it's easier to scroll through the list. There's lots of different ways to do this, but this worked best for me. So I'm editing a scene. This cloud is gonna be a very dark cloud because the light's gonna dim down to 20%, and down below, I'm setting a one minute delay. Now I could set that anywhere I want to, but when I build an automation, say at 7 a.m., that means a minute after 7 a.m., the cloud is gonna pass over and dim the light down to 20%. It's best to pick a name that you're going to recognize and understand. I chose to pick the delay, which is one minute. 20% would be the intensity of the cloud. And then I just said dimming. You could say one minute, 20% cloud, whatever makes sense. But when you scroll through the list, you wanna be able to read it easily. So let's save that first cloud. Now you're just gonna keep building those clouds and alternate intensities between low and high. So if the first cloud was 20%, then maybe you want the next cloud to pretty much let the sun through. So that's at 100% with a two minute delay. Then you do a cloud with a three minute delay that's down at 30%. And then the next cloud that's four minutes later is say 80% and you just keep repeating that process until you have all your clouds built. Just a reminder of why we're doing all this work in the first place, we're trying to elicit a response from the plant. We're trying to confuse it into thinking that it's a cloudy day and it has to strain harder to be successful. So when the light comes back on at high intensity, it transpires faster, takes in more CO2, more water. It just strives to be more successful. Plants don't have the ability to differentiate between whether or not a cloud is passing over or another plant has suddenly grown up in its way. But the strong reaction that plants have to shade is a competitive response. And we want that competitive response because we want them to fight harder to reproduce. Let's move over to creating automation. And so these are the actual weather events that occur throughout the day. In my particular case, I wanted to create a weather event every hour on the hour through the entire growing day. I'll show you how to build an automation by building a sunrise automation for our own grow space. So we need two conditions selected. First of all, I'm gonna pick the time. My lights come on at 7 a.m. That's when sunrise is going to start. And I have to pick a second condition, which we're gonna fix in a later version. But right now I'm just picking outdoor humidity in Seattle greater than zero because it's always greater than zero in Seattle. So this is where the system gets pretty cool. So in a sunrise simulation, we want to start at a very low dimming level. So I guess we could call it a high cloud cover level. So the first level we're going to pick has the light at 20%. The next level we're going to pick has the light going up to 25% and so on. And the great thing is, is we can just reuse scenes that we built that we called clouds earlier. So it becomes very easy to create automations once you've got your scenes made. Now let's just name that scene sunrise and we can move on to the next scene and so on. So that's how you create automations and you can create as many of these as you want to. You can see our sunrise automation at the top 
I've got my automations for each hour of the day. You could have a few throughout the day or any combination. I'll just go through this one more time. We're going to edit a weather automation versus a sunrise automation. So we're taking a look at one of my old automations, which was from 7 a.m. And first we're gonna set the humidity condition and then we're gonna set the time. In this particular case, I would actually set it for 8 a.m. since I have a sunrise coming on at 7 a.m. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pick the scenes that we want from the list that's available. And in my particular case, I've got a scene that begins at 20%, so it's a heavy cloud coming over. Then I've got another scene that comes in where the lights go all the way up to 100%, so very light cloud cover. And just as a quick reminder, the first number in minutes is the delay from the top of the hour. So there's a large cloud that comes over after one minute, the lights dim down to 20%. Then after two minutes, the lights go all the way up to 100%. So the delay will determine how long the clouds are over your grow space, which is programmed in the scenes when you first started. Once you get the hang of it, it becomes really easy. You can create as many automations as you want. Remember, we're trying to create a very specific response in our plants that's a competitive response for having the light withdrawn. So the number of minutes and the frequency of the clouds that you program should be strategic based on what you think your plants need. But it's still a new area of study and it's super interesting. So thanks for tuning in today and learning about cloud intelligence and how to program your own clouds with Forever Green Indoors. Appreciate your time.